Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today we're taking our quilt and getting the layers nice and secure by stitching in the ditch. I know, that might be terrifying. There's a lot of ditches in this quilt, right? But we're only going to be stitching in the ditch between the blocks. So those are going to be lines of quilting about 10 inches apart. There's not that many of them and it's going to give you a good practice session for walking foot style quilting. So let's jump on the machine and learn how to stitch in the ditch together. So I'm getting started stitching in the ditch and I've already run one line of quilting through the middle mostly to check my thread color make sure I was happy with it and I am stitching this with white thread mostly so you can really see it. If you wanted to match thread or have this blend in a little bit better then maybe a, a medium gray might blend in better with all of these colors. Wouldn't get too obsessive about it. Your stitching in the ditch really will hide in that ditch if you've pressed your seams open. However, it might not hide immediately. It might take a washing or two for that really to tuck in. So don't obsess about it if you can really see your stitching right now. Okay, so I've made my way to the center of the quilt and this is kind of the most challenging thing uh, when it comes to quilting because we've got so much bulk right here. This is an 80 inch quilt. So we've got 40 inches of quilt in the arm of the machine here. And I've got a lot that's kind of coming off the front of the table wanting to set in my lap. So what I'm gonna do is actually slide closer to the table and bring my body right up against the table. So that way the quilt doesn't have a choice. It has to be kind of upright. So it's not going to get hung up against, uh, against the edge of the table. Okay, so now I'm just kind of getting a feel for it, making sure that everything's going to be flat and you really only need that area where your hands are going to go to be flat and it doesn't even need to be that much space, you know, three or four inches in front of your needle is all you need. Okay, so now I feel pretty comfortable, so I'm going to grab my hand wheel and I'm going to rotate the needle down into the machine and bring it all the way up to the point that the needle is starting to drop back down again. That means that the top thread has made a full rotation through that bobbin and I can tug on that top thread and pull up the bobbin thread. That technique right there got me so stuck when I was a little girl because I never made a full rotation through that bobbin area. So you have to just keep rotating until it's just right. Okay, so take those thread tails, tuck them underneath your foot so they're out of your way. And now we're gonna take the first few stitches and you just wanna kinda of get a grip on the quilt and just take one stitch at a time. This is one of those things. Every once in a while you might have a wild first stitch. That's what I call it whenever you know, you're, you kind of reposition things and maybe squished around on your quilt a little bit, kind of shifted it around and then put a little bit too much tension on the quilt itself, you know, kind of un unconsciously pressing against it, and that might cause your needle to suddenly seem like it's doing something weird. Well, it's actually not. You've actually just kind of been pushing it and putting pressure on it, and it's just popping back into center position. So it's a good thing to keep in mind just to go slowly, you know, just one stitch at a time. Just kind of feel underneath the quilt. Make sure it stays nice and flat. And what I'm feeling for, what my fingers are feeling for under the quilt is lumps and bumps. You know, it needs to feel flat. I can feel the seam allowances, but I'm not feeling like the quilt's rolled up underneath itself and it's, I'm stitching through multiple, you know, like two layers of the quilt. You know what I mean? Uh, that I'm not stitching it to itself again. Uh, and then that is really important. You need to be always feeling for that because we've got so much bulk here that could easily happen. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about stitching right in the ditch because this is a very common question I'm asked almost daily. And yes, I press my seams open and yes, I'm stitching right in the ditch. I think it looks better that way and I think it's perfectly fine to do it that way. The first thing to keep in mind, please go back to watching the videos on how to piece our log cabin block. So you can see I piece with a really short stitch length. I lower my stitch length to 1.5 millimeters that locks my stitches together really tight, locks the pieces together super tight. The, that seam when you piece with a 1.5 millimeter stitch length, it locks everything together. It's really actually very challenging to rip your seams out with a seam ripper. So you better believe that's gonna be really locked together nicely. So that's really the key. 
I feel like piecing that tight together allows me to press my seam allowances open and then also allows me to be able to stitch right in that ditch. And I think adding extra thread to this area is only adding more stability, more security. I've never had an issue with this. The common fear that I've heard is stitching right in the ditch when the seams are pressed open, your needle will hit one of the lines of stitching from piecing and break it, cause a hole in the seam, which will then allow batting to uh, leak out. Well, I've never had that issue happen. And I think, honestly, that's a carryover from hand piecing. You know, back in the day, we hand pieced our quilts together. Our stitches probably weren't very small or very consistent. So it made sense to press your seam allowances to one side and stitch kind of in that valley on one side of the ditch rather than right in the ditch. And that's understandable, but we're machine piecing now, really tight stitch length. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, so we've gone about, looks like we've gone about uh, 14 inches or so from the center, and it feels like I need to do a shift. What that means is just pulling the quilt through the arm of the machine like this, making sure that that bulk is not pulling against me because the key here is to let the walking foot do the work. It needs to be able to walk, it needs to be able to move, and in order to do that, it can't get hung up by the quilt being too bulky. So that shift, just kind of sliding that stuff through the arm of the machine. It's so important to have a table behind your machine so the quilt has somewhere to go. If you absolutely don't have space for that, then think vertical, look up your wall, look overhead. See if you could install clamps or clips and be able to clip your quilt upward. And that can definitely help. That can definitely improve the way it feels on your machine. Now, another thing to watch out for, I don't know about you, but my machine has lots of buttons <laughs> right here on the front and it's so easy to hit them. And then I would not be doing a straight stitch. Like pretty much all of my decorative stitches are in different buttons here on the face of the machine. So it would be really easy to change stitches and suddenly start decorative stitching instead of uh, straight stitching. So just be mindful of that if you hear you know, the sound that it makes whenever I change stitches is a sound that I'm always listening for. So if I ever accidentally hit a button, hopefully I'll catch it. If you do hit a button and, you know, your machine suddenly starts doing something weird, don't worry, don't panic. Just go on ahead and stop, break threads, pick out those stitches and get started again. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so you can see me shifting here, just kind of getting it situated. And we're actually almost halfway through this line. And please keep in mind that this is the hardest right in the center. What I'm showing you is the hardest part of this process. It's gonna get easier the further you go out. It's gonna get easier the more lines you put in the quilt. But I want you to see this is the quilt at its absolute bulkiest. And this is a machine with about a six inch harp space. I only have six inches here from the, um, the needle to the back of the machine. So I don't have a lot of space to put the quilt even, but it's slow, careful stitching, you know, working about three to four inches at a time, staying right in that ditch. And you know, if I veer out, am I gonna stop and rip that out? Absolutely not. I'm not gonna rip that out. I'm gonna keep on stitching. So I've zoomed in here just a bit so you can get a better view of my hands and the needle and that slow, careful stitching right in the ditch. And like I said, if you pop out, who cares? Keep stitching, you know? It's not the end of the world. The front of your quilt's still gonna look great. The back of your quilt's still gonna look great. It's not the end of the world. And the nice thing is right here in the yellow section, my white thread pretty much completely blends in. So I can make all kinds of mistakes in this section. That's what's kind of nice. Um, whenever you're in a section like this and your thread matches, then you can just kind of say, okay, make all of your mistakes now. <laughs> you have permission, make all of them right now, get them out of your system. And then you can do all of your really nice perfect stitching and all of the other colors, you know, especially that red really contrasted quite a bit in that red area. And it will get easier. You know, it's gonna feel challenging. Uh, this is certainly an arm and shoulder workout. And it's, it's gonna be something that you might not wanna do all, you know, try and do all at once. So um, maybe stitch one line from the center to the outside edge, take a break, 
you know, maybe that's all you do for one day. That's fine. You know, there's only, uh, I think seven seams, you know, if we're stitching in the ditch, only stitching in the ditch around the blocks, then there's seven seams going horizontal, seven seams going uh, vertical. So that's not that many seams. You could take that many days uh, to stitch your quilt in the ditch and that's okay. Sometimes when I have a really hard project, that's how I work it out. I break it down into tiny chunks. I give myself small goals to get those chunks knocked out. And in no time, you know, that many days, seven days, 14 days has passed and I've got that hard project finished. You know, it's just a matter of breaking it down, making it easier to swallow rather than trying to do it all in one day, which would be quite exhausting. Okay, we're coming up here on the end and it's, it feels so much easier when you get out here. It really, really does. It's so much easier, so much faster, but watch your speed. Stay right in the ditch. And you can see my hands, kind of how I position my hands on the quilt. And mine is a very squishy, thick, fluffy quilt. I used wool batting in this quilt because I wanted it to be extra puffy and have really good stitch definition. You know, so the stitches really pop, pop out between the puffy quilt layers. But you don't have to do it that way. If you wanted a little bit of an easier quilting experience, use a thinner batting. You know, really thin needle punched cotton batting or polyester batting is going to be much thinner. And so the quilt's gonna be less bulky and that's gonna be so much easier. Okay, last pin right here on the edge. And I'm gonna stitch straight off and into the batting. And I'm gonna go on ahead and stitch off about an inch and a half or so. And I'm doing that because if I stitch that far, I know even if those stitches unravel just a little bit, it's not going to be a problem because they're really gonna get locked into that batting. And you know, we'll go in and trim that up whenever we go to bind our quilt later. But there, I break thread and now return to the center. <laughs> so it's returning to the center time. And what I'm doing is just pulling the quilt back through the machine. And the nice thing is that line of ditching is kind of an open channel now. There's no pins in the way. As I shift the quilt around, I can easily move it without the pins getting in the way. Now I have these thread tails here. I'm just gonna break those just a little shorter, but I'm gonna leave about five inches here on the surface of the quilt. So that way I can tie that off and bury it later. I wanna tie it off properly so it's nice and secure. On the batting side, we don't have to do that because Obviously we were in the batting and even if they unravel a bit, it's not gonna be a problem. Okay, one thing I did wanna show you, see how I'm starting off center ever so slightly? I mean, you could pull up thread tails right in the dead center of the quilt and that would be perfectly fine. But I think it's a little bit better to pull up ever so slightly off center so you don't end up with uh, two thread breaks or total of four thread tails all in one place. So here I am, this is the opposite side of the line that I stitched to get started. And then now what I'm gonna do, and this is, this is kind of careful. You really wanna get this right. I'm gonna bring my walking foot right to that spot where the stitching ended, where actually where it began, <laughs> that line of stitching. I'm gonna drop the needle down right on that last stitch, pull up my bobbin thread, tuck them underneath that foot. And then I'm gonna rotate that hand wheel again to drop the needle down so it is right in the correct spot, right in the spot where the previous line of stitching ended. And then now I can get started, one stitch at a time, working from the center. And that's gonna ensure that that join, where those two lines of quilting began, it's gonna be seamless. It's gonna look great on the front and the back of the quilt. And the key to that is just get started stitching. Don't sit there and build up thread in one place. Just immediately start stitching and pushing the quilt through the arm of the machine. Uh, if you sit there and build up thread or back stitch, you will end up with a glob of thread and it will be very noticeable on both the front and back of the quilt. So watch out for that. I don't prefer that method. We're going to tie off and bury those thread tails instead. And there's another video on that, so make sure to watch it so you know the proper way to tie off and secure your thread tails. And I should say that method is definitely a solid method for show quilting. It's what judges look for. If you ever decide to enter a quilt into a show, it's really important that all of your thread tails are tied off and buried 
So that way, when a quilt judge runs her hand over your quilt, she can't feel those lumps and bumps and knots. And I know if that's not an interest for you at all and you're not at all interested in it, do keep in mind this is also the most secure way to lock your thread tails in place as well. So there's more than one reason why we do it that way. Okay, so as you can see, I'm now just doing the exact same thing again, getting the quilt into the machine, shifting it through when I need to. And this is just a feeling kind of thing for me when I feel like that bulk needs it, like I have space that I can push it through and that would be helpful. You know, that's just a feeling thing. And please pay attention to how I just manhandle the quilt. It doesn't bother me. You know, I'm not in any way um, precious <laughs> about it. As far as I'm concerned, the uh, basting pens and pen mores are supposed to be holding it in place and I can manipulate it, move it, push it, squish it, whatever I need to do at any time. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, when I was teaching Josh how to quilt with a walking foot, he was kind of hesitant about really squishing the quilt into the machine and really manhandling it the way that, you know, sometimes you just have to. And that was one of the things that, you know, kind of rocked his world was when I started really, you know, squishing the quilt around and moving it. So definitely keep that in mind too. And I can remember when I first got started, you know, the instructions that I read were roll the quilt into a log. And as you can see, that would have made this much bulkier. It would have been make it much harder. Here, I can just go on ahead and pull that whole section through. It's kind of almost, it is kind of rolled, but it's also kind of folded and crinkled up. And now that is so much less bulk in that arm. It doesn't feel as bulky. So that hand can press down a little bit more firmly and flat to the surface of the quilt. So I'm just gonna continue ditching. I'm stitching in the ditch between those quilt blocks. So the stitches are gonna be about every 10 inches apart. That's gonna get the quilt mostly secure and stable depending on your batting. That would be all the quilting that this quilt needs. For my batting, it's gonna need a little bit more stitching. And we're gonna be knocking that out together next. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about stitching in the ditch, but I have to be honest about one thing. After stitching this entire quilt in the ditch and starting some of the quilting design, I realized that I kind of didn't really like my thread color choice for the stitching in the ditch. I did white thread and it ended up showing up quite a bit on the back and it kind of, mm, it kind of competed a little bit more than I expected with my overall quilting design. So if I could go back in time and reverse something, I probably would have picked, uh, maybe I would have done some more matching colors. I would have broken thread more often, something like that. You know, this is one of those things with quilting. I can't say that I know everything and sometimes I make mistakes too. And there's no right or wrong way of doing any of this. You know, it's all a continual process of developing your opinion of what you like to see on your quilts and what you don't. And I know moving forward now that I probably won't ever stitch in the ditch on a bright quilt like this with white thread. So lesson learned. Uh, so I don't consider that a complete disaster. It's just one of those things I wanted to share with you. And hopefully you can understand that every quilt is a learning process. And this is my second time making this quilt. So you would have thought I would have learned this the first time around, but there you go. So I hope that you're enjoying this block, this party and quilting along with us this year. If you're just getting started and you're looking for the quilt pattern for the Rainbow Log Cabin Quilt, you can find it in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. And you can find that at leahday.com slash walking foot. So come and pick up a copy of the book and join in the fun. You can work at your own pace, creating the Rainbow Log Cabin quilt. We're gonna piece it and quilt it all in one big piece. And our first quilting design starts next week. So definitely come and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to our videos on YouTube so you don't miss the next one coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.